What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week 14 deadline. So I'm going to go through the latest press conference and injury information about Watkins, Bowen and Eze in particular, answer some of your questions and talk through my own team as well. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button to help me hit 400,000 subscribers. Otherwise, let's jump into it. All right, let's start with Ollie Watkins, who's currently flagged in FPL. Now, Aston Villa had a European match last night on Thursday, and he wasn't in the squad at all. Now, you might look at that and think, well, that's just a rest. But pretty much every other first-team player either started that game or was on the bench. And before the match, Unai Emery was asked whether Watkins was injured or rested, and he said both. Now, this is the latest that we have from Friday afternoon. Unai Emery on whether Ollie Watkins will be fit for Bournemouth in game week 14. He's going to be a doubt. We are going to wait until tomorrow and it will depend if we can take the risk with him and what he feels for one match for 90 minutes. It's 50-50 for Sunday. And Unai Emery doesn't really strike me as a manager that's playing mind games here. I think he's usually quite open in terms of injuries and stuff like that. I know the Moreno thing kind of dragged on, but I don't think he was purposely misleading us. I think that was just the type of injury that he had. So I think whichever way you look at it, Ollie Watkins is a doubt from an FPL perspective for this weekend now i know he's one of those players that starts pretty much every single game usually plays 90 minutes so most people are going to look at this and just say well he's going to start either way it doesn't really matter but i think even if you feel like that and by the way if i had to put money on it i'd probably bet it mostly towards him starting as well but even if you think that there is still some doubt here it's literally been said by the manager so ollie watkins is now looking like a slightly worse pick than he was this time last week and i'm saying it's only minor i'm not saying you have to all go and rush out and sell him but he is maybe a problem for game week 14 and then after that you've got man city at home and arsenal at home in game weeks 15 and 16 now absolutely we already knew those fixtures were coming but i think you kind of take that because you think well i get bournemouth anyway and i'm just keeping for those home games i want him for game week 18 but if he's going to miss bournemouth and then play man city and arsenal that suddenly doesn't look quite as good so I think there is potential there to sell him, but I don't think everybody has to rush out and do it. There's Bowen to worry about, there's Eze for some people. Some of you are going to own all three, and I think Eze in particular, and maybe Bowen, are slightly more, or are bigger issues than Ollie Watkins is. So would I sell Watkins for a hit, for example? Probably not, especially if you've got a decent bench. Because one, he might even play Bournemouth, and if he doesn't, you probably would want to keep him longer term if you're in a better position where the rest of your team is looking good you've got a spare transfer or even two free transfers then maybe you could look to move him on as a short-term move because as good as aston villa are right especially from an attacking point of view and they are home matches as well it's worth saying man city and arsenal are the top two defenses in the league and again i'm not trying to change the narrative here i was all ready to carry watkins through and i may still do that but it doesn't look quite as good if he's going to miss that Bournemouth game. And I think we'll get, we're going to look at it and think, he always starts, he's going to start this game. But a lot of us thought that about Bowen last week, and then look what happened. So there's clearly an issue here. If Emery wanted to give him some rest, he could have just benched him last night, right? But he didn't do that. He was just out of the squad completely. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to weigh it up on an individual basis, depending on what the rest of your team looks like. The two players that most people are going to look at to bring in we discussed yesterday on the game week preview and that is darwin nunez and obviously Isaac from newcastle if you're going to go for one my preference is darwin just because of the next three fixtures but both players are really good options the thing that i'll be cautious of is one or two things to be cautious of one people have got a lot of money wrapped up in watkins potentially so you can check this by going to the transfers page then click on list it will show you what you bought the player for. In my case, it was 8.2 million. What he's gone up to, which is 8.5, and I can sell him for 8.3. So if I sell him from my FPL team, I'll have 8.3 to spend on another player. And if he doesn't drop in price, I'll have to buy him back for 8.5. So I'm going to lose potentially 0.2. Now, if enough people sell him, he might go down in price anyway, but you kind of get the idea there. Some of you might have got him even cheaper than that. And the reason that I would be making a note of how much you're potentially going to lose is you are probably going to want him back because in game week 18 he's got that great fixture of Sheffield United at home and it's not like it's a bad time to play him in game week 17 against Brentford away either so I just think even if you go to Isaac and Darwin and those two players do really well 
I would be looking at it as wanting Watkins back later on because it's not just Sheffield United at home. They got Man United away, which I guess is not that great on paper, but the way Man United defend it at the moment is probably not that bad. Then they got Burnley at home, Everton away, Newcastle at home, Sheffield United away. Then they play Man United again, but this time at home. Then it's Fulham away, Forest at home, Luton away. I just look at that from 18 all the way down to 27 and just think Watkins could be someone we just leave in our team. So if you're going to lose a lot of money and have to use two transfers to take him out and back in, is it worth it? I think it really depends on how well the rest of your team is set up. If you're looking good, you're well set up for the next few weeks, you've got spare transfers, maybe you use this as the reason to sell him maybe some of you have been looking for a reason to do it or just to try and catch better fixtures in the short term but i definitely don't look at what emery has said today and say that he's a must sell if i had to guess if he's going to start i'm going to go with yes but only because he always starts and i said pretty much the same thing about bowen last week and that was wrong so i cannot guarantee you either way the villa match is on sunday because they've just played in europe and it's uh when is it two o'clock we're probably not going to get more information before the deadline this is what you've got to go on so let me know down in the comments below are you selling him and who for so jared bowen owners have been waiting for a big update from david moyes all week and i'm afraid to say we don't really have it this is what he said in the press conference jared of course had an injury i'll pick up with the medical team and we'll see you later this afternoon so the good news is he didn't rule him out of the crystal palace game but he also didn't say that he was fit and available to be in the squad because he needs to see what the medical team are going to say. Now, maybe that's not the case. Maybe he really knows already. He doesn't want to give it away. But either way, we don't have the information we really need to make an informed decision. Now, when I tweeted this, someone did reply to say the key word is had. So he said, Jared, of course, had an injury. Now, that could mean he doesn't have it anymore. And Moyes just doesn't want to let the opposition know. But it is worth saying he talked about Bowen after he talked about other players that weren't in the squad for their European match on Thursday night because they had flu-like symptoms. So I don't know if he's saying he had an injury and now he doesn't, or he's saying that all these players missed out because of flu, but Bowen missed out because he had an injury instead. I suspect it's probably the latter, and I'm not sure how much we should kind of read into exactly how he said it. I think this is a really tricky one, and I kind of... I almost prefer given an opinion on players like this when I own them. I always feel like I don't want to say the wrong thing when someone else has to make the decision for their team. But I would be leaning more towards selling, probably, if I had a spare transfer. Would I take him out for a hit if I had a decent bench option? Probably not, because I think when he is fit and available, he is going to be a really good option over this December period. Mostly because he's nailed on, but also because of the fixtures they've got. But if you've got a spare transfer, especially if you don't have Burmo, I would probably move him on. I saw someone else say to me that they're going to change him to Palmer because long term the fixtures are quite good there. Plus, obviously, they'd have more money to spend elsewhere. I think that's fine too. But I think if I've got one free transfer and the rest of the squad is looking pretty good, I would be tempted to sell just because of the uncertainty. Like I think he's a really great FPL option, but of course, that's only the case if he's going to play. And it was an issue with his knee, I think. He had fluid on his knee is what the reports were going around before last week. And David Moyes kind of made it sound like he was close to playing in that game. But now he's still not saying that he's fully fit. I would just be a little bit cautious. And I think with players like Bowen, they're a bit like Bruno Fernandes. They don't miss out that often. So the fact he has already missed a game would make me think there is definitely some doubt here. It could be that he starts. And I'm thinking to myself now... If I had to put a little bit of money on whether he starts or doesn't, I'd probably put it on him starting just because he's that type of player. But at the same time, from an FPL point of view, I feel like there's enough uncertainty there to maybe get rid of him. As always, it's really going to come down to your squad, you know, which other transfers you want to make, what's the highest priority. For some of you, it might make sense to move him. For some of you, it might make sense to keep him and get another assessment ahead of game week 15. The only problem there is, of course... That is a midweek game. And I think that is something to be conscious of over the next month. That when you start missing like a week, you can even miss... Sorry, you could miss like two or three games rather than just one. So if he doesn't play Sunday, the next game is on Thursday. Now, to be fair, compared to some teams, that's quite a long turnaround. It's the same as when they play in Europe, of course. But it's still not a whole week off to recover. So it might mean that he misses 14 and 15. And that would be my worry. I think if the game was on Tuesday or Wednesday... I would definitely sell him. I think Thursday you could maybe make a case to keep hold. But again, if you've got a spare transfer, I would possibly just 
deal with this. If you've already got Mbermo, and there's not really any other midfielders you want, like I said, you've got a good bench, you could keep hold of him. But I don't know, unless we get more news ahead of the deadline, I think it's a frustrating one if you're an owner. The deadline is a little bit later tomorrow, so that it's at half 1 UK time instead of 11 a.m., so maybe we'll get some more information tonight or ahead of that deadline. But the game is on Sunday. So the chances of that are quite low. So yeah, all I can say is good luck. I'd probably lean towards selling. But it's easy to say that when I don't have to make the decision. So much more concrete news about Eze from Roy Hodgson. He also talked about a couple of other players as well. I'll just quickly go through them. So Rob Holding's out for a month. That doesn't really matter for FPL. Anderson and Gay are the first choice centre-backs anyway. He also said that DeCorey has snapped his Achilles tendon... Hopefully, he won't be out for the season, but it's possible. That doesn't really help their defensive prospects. Now, to be fair, I think if you don't have a Palace defender, you shouldn't be buying one at this point anyway because the fixtures are about to turn. And if you've got one like I do, I don't think it's the end of the world if you have to play them against West Ham away and Bournemouth at home because after that, you're probably looking to get rid anyway. So not ideal, but probably not a huge thing for FPL at the moment. On Eze, he said he saw a, sur a surgeon at the start of the week and is seeing one again today. His foot is in a boot, hopes it won't need surgery. To me, that is a very easy sell in FPL. He's going to miss game week 14. Game week 15 against Bournemouth is on Wednesday, and then they play Liverpool in game week 16 next Saturday. So in eight days' time, they will have had three matches, and Eze's foot's in a boot, and he's seeing a surgeon about it today. That doesn't sound great. So I think he's going to miss at least three game weeks, possibly more. After Liverpool, it's Man City away. Then it's Brighton at home in game week 18, which is not too bad. But then it's Chelsea away anyway. Brentford at home, Arsenal away. This is someone to get rid of. As always, the questions will come in about removing him for a hit. If it's a long-term player who's going to be much better than whoever you've got on your bench, fair enough. Um, otherwise, you could just leave the decision until game week 15 instead. In terms of who to go for, in Burmo is the obvious one. Some people might want to look at Sterling. Just remember that he's on four yellow cards. And if you don't have the money to upgrade him, I'd be looking at someone like Gordon or Palmer instead. Obviously, you've got other options, William, Huang, etc. Right? None of them are bad, but probably my favorite two are Palmer or Gordon. So Eze, very easy. He has to be sold sooner rather than later. So Pochettino held his press conference today and said that Nkunku has a chance of being part of the Chelsea squad against Brighton on Sunday, and they're going to assess him on Saturday. And I think this is kind of good news all around. Chelsea fans definitely want to see him in that first 11. Even those of us that don't support Chelsea, I think are probably quite excited to see him play in the Premier League. And obviously from an FPL point of view, lots of people have been talking about potentially getting him in their squad. He only costs 7.3 million. The fixture run for Chelsea is pretty good. I still think... He's someone not really to worry about right now. We don't even know if he's going to be in the squad for Brian. Even if he is, how many minutes is he going to get off the bench? He's been out for a long time now. Game week 15 deadline is on Tuesday. No one's going to bring him in for Man United away, I don't think. Not that it's a bad fixture. I just don't think you're going to see enough against Brighton. So then you're maybe looking game week 16, Everton away. I think for most people, you should probably hold off until game week 17, which is Sheffield United at home. And from then, the fixtures get really good. They're not bad before that. But in game week 17, it's Sheffield United at home. Then it's Wolves away, Palace at home, Luton away, Fulham at home. That's a really good run for Chelsea. So I think the main thought process here would be just keep him in the back of your mind as an option, but don't let it sway your decisions too much because who knows how many minutes he'll get? Who knows how much he'll be managed? I've just said, you know, from game week 17, they've got five game weeks, great fixtures. Is he going to play all of them? Probably not, right? So it's whether or not he's worth that slight risk in minutes, but you you should give yourself a bit of time uh, to kind of assess that. The knock-on is potentially, as we discussed before, he might take penalties off Palmer. I personally think it will take Palmer missing a penalty before that happens. And obviously you're adding another attacker to that squad. So there could be a bit of minutes management overall, but I still think players like Sterling, maybe even Jackson to a certain extent, although I'm not sure I'd be buying him right now, and Palmer are still good options, but just remember that Sterling is on four yellow cards. So I feel like I run through an update on Sven Botman every single week, and I'm not sure if anyone watching or listening really cares, but I'm so invested in this because I'd like to buy Lascelles. He looks like incredible value, and it's going to allow me to go and get another defender in that I want. And Newcastle have got some pretty good fixtures coming up. Um, so that's why I'm still going through this. Obviously, you can skip to the next section if you're not interested. This is what Eddie Howe has said. Sven is not training with us at the moment. We are building up his load after his injury. He is reacting well to the work he is doing. 
we would love to get him back he's a big player for us now the talk a couple of weeks ago was that they were waiting to see whether his knee would react and if it did he might need surgery so this is positive news for sure but the fact that he's not even training with the team yet makes me think he's going to be out for at least another two weeks now for anyone that wants lascelles the reason why this is such i don't want to say such a big issue it's not this massive problem but why it's maybe bigger than it would be at other stages of the season is because of that blank in game week 18 so most of us have already got two players that are going to blank in that week we might even have three by the time we get there therefore you're going to need your bench now for newcastle in game week 18 their game against Luton away is the 23rd of December, so it's 22 days away. Will Lascelle still be playing at that point? I'm starting to come around to the thought process that it might be worth the risk, because if Botman's not back yet, he's definitely going to miss game week 14, and, pro and definitely 15, right, because that's midweek. He'll almost certainly miss game week 16 as well, which is the Spurs away game. It's about after that, how soon will he be back? I think if I've got Lascelles, I'd probably be happy to play him against Fulham, Luton and Forest in game week 17, 18 and 19. Now game, week's nine, uh, game week 19 against Forest is Boxing Day, so it's 25 days away. And Botman hasn't played, let me just bring him up here. He hasn't played since the six, uh, sorry, since game week 6 against Sheffield United, so that was before the second international break. So it's quite a way away. He's not, gonna, he's not just going to come back in and play 90 minutes every single week. So I'm starting to come around to just getting Lascelles, probably not this week for my own personal team anyway, but just getting him and taking the risk and maybe just limiting myself to two players from Brentford or Man City. But if you are thinking about getting him, uh, getting him in, any of the cheap Newcastle players, there is some risk there. Now, I did have some discussions with people today that maybe Liveramento is the option instead. He's only 0.2 million more. And obviously he's relying on potentially Dan Byrne coming back. The reason that I'm not that sure about him is because he's not even nailed with Dan Burn out because of Lewis Hall. Now I think Liveramento is definitely ahead in the pecking order, but Lewis Hall is going to get some minutes over Christmas. So it's it's what do you take? Do you take Lascelles, who's absolutely nailed until Botman comes back, or do you take Liveramento that will probably be more assured of some minutes longer than Lascelles because Dan Burn's probably going to be out a little bit longer. But at the same time, you don't even know if he's going to start every single game because of Lewis Hall. And that's kind of my dilemma right now. So I, I'm kind of leaning towards the sales. But for any, anyone that is invest, uh, as invested in this as me, we still don't really know when Botman's going to be back. But I just think we're getting closer and closer to game week 18 now. Maybe it could be worth the risk. But don't really know. We'll wait for the next update, which will be before game week 15. Then the next update before game week 16. And like I said, if you don't care about Sven Botman or Lascelles, you can just skip this section every single week. All right, let's get into some of your questions. So could Garnacho be an interesting option as a fifth midfielder? And I definitely get the thinking. He started again midweek for the Champions League game that Man United had, scored in that game after the great goal that he scored against Everton last weekend. And look, everyone's squad's going to be set up a little bit different. It all, it's all going to come down to how much money you've got to spend on that fifth midfield spot. But I just think for a little bit more money you can get a player that's pretty much nailed on and in some cases also takes penalties as well because although Garnacho has started back-to-back -back games Rashford was suspended for that Champions League game so he couldn't play anyway so it made sense to play Garnacho on the left and Anthony on the right but in some games moving forward even though we've seen Rashford play on the right and Garnacho has been pretty good on the left it could be that Anthony's on the right Rashford's on the left and Garnacho is on the bench and look at 4.7 million that's a pretty enticing price. But if you look at the midfielders for kind of 5.5 or under, which I did go through on the game week preview yesterday, Cole Palmer's only 0.6 million more. Penalty taker for Chelsea. Really good fixtures coming up. Same with William at Fulham. He's just taken two penalties against Wolves. 5.3 million. Pretty much nailed on. Like his minutes look really good. The fixtures they've got coming up as well. Liverpool way is not great in 14. But between game weeks 15 and 18, there's three home games there of Forest, West Ham, and Burnley. Uh, and look, I'm not going to go through every single midfielder that costs 5.5 or below. Uh, but even someone like Huang, who I think is a bit more expensive. Let me just double check his price. Yeah, 5.6. And look, don't get me wrong, right? We're going up 0 0.9 million from the price of Garnacho. But I think for most people, you've got that kind of money to spend on that fifth midfield spot. And if you haven't, it's probably worth trying to find that money from somewhere. So I don't mind Garnacho because he's only 4.7.
but I don't think he's completely nailed on. I think for a little bit more money, you get someone that probably is, plus they get penalties as well. So I don't think I'll be going there right now. So who are the best goalkeepers to look at for the upcoming fixture run, like Sanchez, Flecken, Raya or Leno? Now, I did talk about Kelleher on yesterday's video. I won't go over too much old ground, but the short summary is, if you're on Game Week 19 wildcard or your team looks perfect and you've got two free transfers, then fair enough, you could look at bringing him in as a short-term move. But for most people, I think it's probably best to ignore him because Allison could be back after like four to five game weeks or something like that so i'm probably not going to go there but i'm not completely ruling out doing it next week i just think Ariola, as bad as he's been he's got crystal palace at home this week it's really not a bad fixture in terms of the players that were mentioned in the question i think raya is definitely the best option given how good that arsenal defense is but he also costs the most as well so he's at um 4.9 million which is not expensive for what he offers because Arsenal are one of the best defences in the league. But for how a lot of people are set up right now in terms of money being tight and stuff like that, I don't think many people are able to stretch De Rea. But if you can, I'd definitely consider it. And the thing about goalkeepers is you're a little bit happier to carry them through bad fixtures. So for example, right, I've got Saliba and Gabriel. Now I don't know my plans for those two players right now, but I may well sell one when we get to game week 16, because we've got Villa away, Brighton at home, Liverpool away. Even though I'd like to have them long term, I'm probably going to have to get at least one other defender in. With your goalkeeper, you just put them in and leave them in. And I think for most people, they're probably going to wildcard around game weeks 30 or 31. And Arsenal's fixtures right from kind of now up until that point are pretty decent, right? There are some trickier ones in there, like the ones I've just mentioned. But for the most part, the fixtures are pretty good. The only thing to note is game week 28 they played Brentford at home and he won't be able to play because obviously the loan deal that's why he missed the last one against Brentford away and Ramsdale played instead but Ray is a great choice I think I would be more looking at Sanchez just for the money saving right it's only 0.3 million but at least for my team right now money is quite tight and I think Chelsea's fixtures are pretty good some of us might be looking to bring in one of their defenders soon but you got reese james is a bit injury prone carl will is he completely nailed on do we think that tiago silva will play all those matches over christmas possibly not whereas with sanchez you get to cover that defense without worrying about rotation so i think for 4.6 he looks pretty good i don't mind flecken either but i think it's a little bit short term and you're really relying on that double in game week 20, I think, because they blank in game week 18. So you can't have Flecken and Turner, because otherwise you'll have no goalkeeper in game week 18. So just bear that in mind. But the fixtures before the blank are pretty good. And afterwards, they're not bad. Wolves at home, Palace away, and Forest at home between game weeks 19 and 21. But after that, if I'm thinking right up until that potential wild card, you've got Spurs away, Man City at home, Liverpool at home, Chelsea at home, Arsenal away, Man United at home, Brighton at home. Maybe you don't worry about the Brighton fixture because that's in game week 31. But overall, Brentford's long-term fixtures for defensive options are not great. And usually when you bring a goalkeeper in, you don't want to have to transfer them out straight away. So if you're doing Areola to Flecken, first of all, obviously keep in mind that Turner won't play in 18 as things stand. But I think you'll want to move him on again later on. So I'd rather just go for Sanchez. With Leno, I'm not the biggest fan because I feel like if you're looking for a new goalkeeper right now, lots of people are doing it because they're frustrated with Ariola. And I get it. West Ham defence hasn't been great, but neither has the Fulham defence. I just don't trust them whatsoever. And Leno's a really good goalkeeper. Of course, he can get you saves. And so far this season, he's on 50 points, which is only nine points off Allison, who's top, two points off Onana, and one point off, John uh, yeah, off Johnston at Crystal Palace. But I feel like with, with Leno, a lot of the points he's had we're at the start of the season, right? So we got 12 points against Everton first day of the season. Everton should have definitely scored in that game. Uh, Crystal Palace, he got a 10-pointer in game week six. If you look from game week seven to 13, he's not had more than three points in any match. Now, the Fulham fixtures are not bad from now until kind of game week 25-ish. There might be a few clean sheets along the way, but I just don't trust that defence. And I guess the long and the short of it is, I don't think that Leno is better than Ariola. That is it. And I just don't think he's worth the extra money either. So I wouldn't move there. Um, and in terms, just to kind of finish off this question, I don't think there's any other goalkeepers I'd really be looking at. Obviously, Edison, if they double in 20 Man City, that could be an option. The fixtures are quite good around then for City as well. The defense is obviously really good, but he's quite expensive. And again, if you can't afford Ray, you definitely can't afford Edison. 
you know, Jose Sarr, players like that, Martinez at Villa, Pickford, etc. I just don't think they're necessarily worth moving to. So if I was going to go to one that had the money, it'd be Raya. If not, I'd go Sanchez. Outside of that, unless you want to go for a short-term punt on Kelleher, I'd probably just leave Ariola for now and just fingers crossed that the clean sheets come with some of the good fixtures over the next few game weeks. So how overlooked is Fabian Cher? He's got great fixtures coming up and he's nailed on. Now, I've said myself over the last couple of game weeks, I do think he's someone that is maybe being overlooked a little bit. But I guess if I've said it a few times, now you're saying it as well. Perhaps he's being looked at just enough. But I get where you're coming from. I spoke about cheap defenders yesterday, so players under 5 million. And there's lots of options, but no one is kind of perfect that's nailed on, has got great fixtures and plays for a great defence. I think if you spend a little bit more, just over 5 million, there are a couple of players that kind of fit that criteria. And I think Cher is one of them. If you look at the fixtures that Newcastle have got coming up, and I get it right, people have got LaSalle, some people have gone for Liveramento, they're a lot cheaper. But sometimes it's worth the extra money for that peace of mind. And Fabian Cher is 5.2 million. Now, Man United at home. Personally, I think Man United will score in that game. Newcastle will probably win. But I, I don't necessarily think there's a clean sheet. But I guess either way, if you had Shea, you're probably not too concerned about playing him. Then you've got Everton away, which is okay. I think Spurs away is tough in game week 16. Then you've got Fulham at home. Luton away, which is part of that blank game week for Brentford and Man City, where you're going to need some of your bench players. And then Forest at home in game week 19. The fixtures get a little bit trickier after that. So I think for the next six game weeks overall... He's a pretty good option that, like you say, should start every single one of those games if he's fit. Bearing in mind, they've also got a Champions League game and a Carabao, a Carabao Cup quarterfinal, I think it is. But he should still start all those games if he's fit. And he's get, got a bit of goal threat from set pieces as well. So I really like him. But if you didn't want to go for him at that price, then I would strongly look at Pedro Porro as well. Now, I appreciate it's very easy to sit here and say, well, just spend a bit more money. Like, go from Garnacho to Palmer and go from, I don't know, Gabriel to Pedro Parra and the money starts adding up, you can't afford it. But if you can find a way to squeeze that extra cash out, Pedro Parra at 5.3 million, so just uh, 0.1 million more than Fabian Scher gets you a nailed-on player who doesn't seem to have too many injury concerns or anything like that, like someone like Reese James would have. And after City away... I think the fixtures for Spurs are pretty good, bearing in mind that he's definitely nailed on and his attacking threat is pretty good as well. Again, he's not perfect, but I think he's worth, like, he's probably worth the 0.4 over a Gabriel or someone like that. If you're going from LaSalle's to Paro, obviously there's a much bigger gap, but hopefully you kind of get the point that I'm trying to put across. And then other defenders, I'm not sure there's a huge amount of others actually, just over 5 million. Obviously, you've got um, Saliba. But after the next two fixtures, Arsenal's fixtures get a little bit trickier. Um, and that's probably it. Kyle Walker at 5.3 million. I've probably overlooked him quite a bit. Would I bring him in for Spurs at home? Probably not. Villa away is not necessarily a clean sheet either. But he's played 90 minutes every single game so far. Luton away in 16. Palace at home in 17. If you've only got two other players from Brentford or Man City, you could carry him through the blank. Then you've got Everton away, Sheffield United at home. Newcastle away, Burnley at home, Brentford away, Everton at home. The thing I like about Man City's fixtures after that blank is even if they don't get that double in 20, the fixtures are still really good. So again, for a little bit more money, 5.3 million, the same as Poro, you're getting someone that's at the moment nailed on, maybe not quite as much attacking threat, in, in fact, definitely not as much attacking threat, but plays for a very good defense in Man City that aren't struggling with loads of injuries and stuff like that. So I think it's well worth looking at trying to get one of these players in. I get, if I had to choose one between Walker, Cher, and Porro, it would definitely be Pedro Porro. And I wouldn't completely rule out Reese James either, but I don't think he can play all those games over Christmas. So yeah, I think Cher is a little bit overlooked, but I've mentioned it so often now, maybe he's not. Um, and yeah, I think he's a solid option. I guess it's whether or not you want to take the risk on one of those cheaper Newcastle players, which is fine because you get extra money to spend. But you have to do it knowing that they're not guaranteed to start every match, especially when Botman is back. All right, let's take a quick look at my team. Just a quick reminder about how I'm set up for game week 14. So I've got one free transfer and 0.1 million in the bank. My goalkeeper is Ariola against Crystal Palace at home. And to be honest, with all this Ollie Watkins stuff to think about, Kelleher isn't even in my thoughts right now. With one free transfer, I don't need to change my goalkeepers. Maybe next week. But I just don't think he's someone that I'm personally going to look to bring in. My back three is double Arsenal. So I've got Gabriel and Saliba against Wolves at home. Not particularly worried about Gabriel. Is there a chance he doesn't start? 
because that's what we saw against Sheffield United at home a few weeks ago, of course. But I already own him, so I'm not going to bench him or anything like that. And I'm currently playing Charlie Taylor against Sheffield United at home over both Gay against West Ham away and Cash against Bournemouth away. I've just got slight doubts about whether or not Cash will start. I wonder if we might see Conza right back, Carlos and Paul Torres centre backs, Luca Dean on the left bombing forward, and obviously they would have the three centre backs in build up. I just think there's enough doubt there for me to not play Cash. I don't think he's so good against Bournemouth away. I have to take that risk. And as bad as Burnley have been, I think Sheffield United are even worse. So currently I'm playing Charlie Taylor. I wish I had Simakas in that spot instead, but I don't. And it's probably not worth a transfer for me this week. The midfield is Salah against Fulham at home. Son against Man City away. Wol uh, sorry, Saka against Wolves at home. Palmer against Brighton at home. In Burma against Luton at home. I've got Harlan captain instead of Salah. I think that's going to stick um, just because I think if Spurs are going to continue to play the way they have been, that's going to probably be a really good thing for Man City. They're missing both their centre-backs, etc. So Haaland's probably going to stick as my captain. If you've got Salah captain, go for, it. Uh, go for it. He's also brilliant this week. And then I've got Watkins, of course, who's flagged. Then the bench is Turner, Archer, Cash and Gay, which I already mentioned. So with Ollie Watkins, I've, at the time of recording this, that news has only just come out from Unai Emery about the fact that he is a bit of a doubt. So I haven't quite processed it yet. My initial thinking is I would prefer to keep him just because I really want him for game week 18. I may even captain him that week. But there's four game weeks before that. Two of them are tricky for Villa. And obviously now he might miss Bournemouth as well. And I've got one transfer. And I don't really have too many other issues to deal with. If all my other players remained fit for game week 15, which they might not, but if they did... You know, Saliba and Gabriel have got Luton away. And Gay's got Bournemouth at home. So I don't need a different defender... I'm happy with all my attackers. So could I warrant using the transfer on Ollie Watkins to bring someone else in? Now, if I did that, it would be Darwin Nunez for sure. And the other thing I like about that, so if I just show you here, if I take out Watkins and put Darwin in, who's cheaper, it gives me 0.8 million in the bank, which would allow me to do cash to Pedro Parra, who is a player that I want. Although, as I've just said, in game week 15... I've got three defenders that I could start. It's not the end of the world if I've got to play double Arsenal again in an away game and gay against Bournemouth at home. I don't necessarily think the Crystal Palace defence is great right now, but it's not the end of the world. So I don't necessarily need Poro for 15. And in 16, he's got Newcastle at home anyway. But I just think he's so attacking and the fixtures after that are pretty good. He is someone that I would want. So Watkins to Darwin, which I did briefly look at before all these injury doubts would allow me to do Pedro Porro in, and it still leaves me 0.4 million to play around elsewhere. So Gabriel, for example, for Arsenal, I might sell him when Arsenal's fixtures get a little bit trickier for clean sheets, and that money would allow me to get sharing. So that all sounds good, but of course then my problem is how do I get Watkins back? And I do think he is someone that I would want to bring in, but if I don't really need him until game week 18... Again, not a bad option for the two home games against Man City and Arsenal. Not a bad option for Brentford away, but also nowhere near essential. I've got four game weeks to figure out how I get him back in my team. And who knows, someone else might be injured at that point and I get money from that instead. Maybe the double for you know Man City and Brentford doesn't happen and I can just sell in Burmo for someone cheaper sooner than I thought. Maybe Gordon for the good fixtures for Newcastle. And then I've got the money to go Darwin back to Watkins on paper it all sounds good because Liverpool have got Fulham at home Sheffield United away Palace away and even game week 17 when Darwin plays Man United at home I don't think that's any worse than Watkins playing Brentford away it's only really 18 onwards that I'd need to make that switch so could I just go for a Darwin punt for four weeks and also leave myself a bit more money to upgrade my defense possibly I am very tempted one of my concerns is let's say Watkins misses Bournemouth and he plays the next two games. That means he's starting two of the next three. I think that's probably the best we're going to get from Darwin as well. He didn't start on Thursday in the Europa League. So he probably starts against Fulham. Could he miss Sheffield United? Absolutely. And then he could play against Palace as well. So it might be that on paper I missed the best fixture for Nunez. And he only starts as many games as Watkins. And obviously longer term I do think that Watkins is the better option. So... Like I said, this information has only just come out, so I'm still trying to process what the best move is. If I had to say what I'm going to do right now, I don't know if I just said this, but I'm kind of, I'm very tempted to get Darwin in because I'm always talking about him and I never do it. 
And I think a lot of people are going to stick with Watkins. And maybe that's my little differential over the next few weeks. I'm just a bit worried that I don't have two transfers. I only have one. Now I'm going to use it. I'd be looking to roll sometime soon. But if something else happens in game week 15, then I can't roll again. And then I, I need the couple of transfers to deal with Watkins for 18 to buy him back, basically. And then any other issues that crop up. So it's a difficult one. I think the fact that my team is so well set up for this week and next week means maybe I do have the luxury of doing that. So that's the only move on my mind. If I don't bring Nunez in for Watkins, then I will just roll, hope for the best. And if he doesn't feature at all, I've got Archer off the bench against Burnley away. And then I'm hoping that one of Taylor or Archer gets some kind of return. So that's how I'm set up. Maybe going to bring Darwin in, almost certainly going to captain Harlan. And that is it for me until the deadline stream tomorrow. Remember, it is a later deadline for FPL. It's 1.30 UK time in the afternoon. So I'll be starting streaming about 12 o'clock. So make sure to join me for that. If you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button. Rate five stars if you listen on podcasts. Enjoy your weekend. and I'll catch you tomorrow for the deadline stream.